Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Farah and in today's video, we're going to talk about clickjacking and what makes clickjacking impactful. To do this, we're going to look at some bug bounty reports where clickjacking was rewarded bounties by companies like Google and Twitter. Before we get into this video, let me tell you about today's sponsors, Integrity. Integrity is Europe's largest bug bounty platform, but you don't need to be in Europe to hack on them. They have over 300 active programs and my favorite part about Integrity is how much they give back to the hacking community. For example, they have monthly XSS challenges. They also have a YouTube channel where they educate the bug bounty community on new hacking tools and techniques. You can also follow them on Twitter where they host educational and interactive Twitter spaces and post some great bug bounty tips. So if you're interested to hack on Integrity, then use my link to sign up on their platform. Clickjacking basically means embedding another website within yours using an HTML element called iframe. Before we get into the clickjacking reports, let me tell you about something known as the X-Frame options and content security policy headers. If you're already familiar with these concepts, then you can directly skip to the reports. But if not, then please continue watching. X-Frame options is an HTTP response header which allows or disallows domains from embedding the application's pages in an iframe. For example, an application may allow for a non-sensitive page like About Us. This would allow any website to iframe this page. However, for a sensitive page like Payment or Profile, they may set it to Deny. Or if they have a requirement, they may allow a subdomain or the same domain to iframe the page. These settings will disallow any other site from framing this page. When it comes to Content Security Policy or CSP, applications can prevent clickjacking by using the Frame Ancestors CSP Directive. For example, setting this directive to None is similar to X-Frame options being set to Deny. But you can also choose to allow certain domains using this directive or set it to self, which is again similar to the extreme options being set to same origin. Websites wouldn't want certain sensitive pages like the profile details or payment pages to be embedded on another website, because this means that an attacker can trick a victim into performing sensitive actions on their account unknowingly. For example, imagine an attacker hosts a site that has a simple game on its page and the user needs to click around in specific places to play the game. Now, if the attacker embeds an iframe behind this game, like the payment page of an e-commerce application, then the user may be unknowingly making actions on this payment page while thinking that they are making the clicks for playing the attacker's game. Now that we understand how some pages are more sensitive than others, let's look at the bug reports. First, we have a report where clickjacking was found on Twitter's main application, twitter.com, and this was paid a bounty of $5,040. An attacker could iframe twitter.com using Twitter's player card functionality. So let's look at what this player card functionality does. Player card functionalities allow users to attach photos, videos, and other types of media to tweets which can help in driving traffic to the website. This is an example of a player card where the user has embedded youtube.com onto their tweet and this will allow them to drive traffic directly to their YouTube channel. Twitter obviously had some protections which disallow just anyone from framing their site. Let's look at a few of those protections and how the researcher was able to bypass them. Xframe options header was set to same origin, which meant that only twitter.com domains could iframe this site. Also, same origin only checks if the origin of the frame matches the origin of the topmost window. So the player card feature on Twitter allowed an attacker to bypass this protection as the origin of the topmost window would always be twitter.com. Content security policy was also set to self, which disallowed another domain from framing this site. However, this was a CSP2 directive, which at the time was not supported by Internet Explorer and Safari. There was also a frame buster in the JavaScript of some pages. However, this could be bypassed by an attacker by enabling the sandbox attribute on the iframe tag. This attribute enables certain restrictions on the content of the iframe and one of them includes stopping all script execution. Therefore, an attacker could bypass the frame execution in the JavaScript. After bypassing all these restrictions, an attacker could embed twitter.com in an iframe using custom HTML, which was a feature offered by Twitter player cards. The attack scenario could involve a victim probably clicking and thinking they are watching a normal YouTube video, but behind the scenes, they may actually be clicking authorize on a malicious app with full read and write access. This would allow the attacker to gain long-term access on the victim's account. This clickjacking was also impactful because it was on a tweet and tweets can be liked, shared, retweeted, which makes them appear on the feeds of more and more people. So this clickjacking was vermeable, which definitely added to the impact. 
an attacker could also send this as a promoted tweet to target more people. The next report that we're going to look at was on Google Play Store's payment page and this was paid a bounty of $5,000. So when you wanted to purchase something on Google's Play Store, the URL looked something like this. Google also had some protections against this page being iframed. The content security policy had this value for frame ancestors. And if we look at this, we can see that star.google.com domains were allowed to iframe this page. An attacker could bypass this restriction by simply creating a site on sites.google.com and their final site URL would look like this, which would bypass the protection. Using this, an attacker could iframe the Play Store payment page and trick a victim into making purchases unknowingly. The reason for this clickjacking being impactful was because it was directly related to payments and could lead to a loss of the victim's money. Another simple but impactful report was clickjacking on Google Sites settings page and this was paid a bounty of $1,337. The settings page of Google Sites had the extreme options header whose value was set to same origin. This exploit also involved creating a site on sites.google.com to bypass this protection. And since the origin of the attacker's site matched the origin of the settings page, the attacker could embed the settings page on this site. This clickjacking was impactful because the settings page of Google Sites contained a lot of sensitive actions like renaming the page and deleting the page which could be misused by the attacker. For a bonus report, we have clickjacking found in Metamask which was paid a bounty of $120,000. For this report, I would recommend you to watch the video made by Bug Bounty Reports explained on this topic. I will link it down below so you can find it. And that's all I had for you in this video. I hope you learned something new and understood the context in which clickjacking can be impactful. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'll be posting videos like this a lot more often. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.